Hello folks, how are you? Today is the 31st of December 2020, so New Year's Eve. Next year, or tomorrow, will be 2021, and hopefully that'll be a lot nicer than uh, 2020 was for us all. Um, anyway, let's not dwell on that. Let's get on to why I'm here today. I want to show you today the seeds I'm going to grow next year, I'm going to try and grow next year, in 2021, and the reasons why. Now my seeds fall into several categories, which I'll explain. There are the seeds that I've saved, like these sunflowers, pumpkins and tomatoes. There are seeds I want to try for the first time, or at least try again, like these pumpkins, peppers and loofers. There are old favourites that I have to grow every single year. And of course there are seeds that are left over from previous seasons that either I didn't get around to trying, they didn't do very well, or I just have left over. Or like these ones that came free with a seed order this year. And there are ones I just want to try again because they've done really well this year. And I'm hoping that in the future They'll save me money on buying plastic bags of compost and uh, fertiliser, so the green manures. We'll get into that later. Now why am I showing you these seeds? Well the simple fact is that I'm self-isolating for another few days because people in my support bubble, I should explain, here in the UK uh, we're allowed to have a support bubble if we live alone. Now I do live alone and I do have a support bubble and my support bubble went down with Covid over Christmas. So I legally am required to self-isolate for 10 days, which I'm doing right now. Luckily, um, I live in a nice place. I've got nice neighbours. They've looked after me. They've got me supplies of bread and oranges and beer. Um, so, you know, we're all good. But I am a bit of a loose end. Now there are things I could be doing, like cleaning the house, but that's quite boring. So hopefully this is a bit more interesting. So I'm going to run through these seeds. I'm going to try and grow next year on the allotment. And if you'll subscribe and bear with me and join me, um, I can make this garden channel grow and we can journey through together next year, planting these seeds and see how they, how they, uh, how they crop for us. So without further ado, Let's jump into why I'm growing and why I'm not growing some of these specific seeds. As I say, there's the seeds that I've saved myself. Um, I'm glad I saved these because although um, winter squash, pumpkins cross pollinate, I'm hoping that these are pretty much um, purebreds, so to speak, if that's the right word, probably not. Um, these are open pollinated from a variety called uh, Invincible that I grew a couple of years ago. Um, they were really, they're really nice, really tasty, really big blue pumpkins, absolutely fantastic. Unfortunately, this year um, they came from Marshall's. Originally, they came from Marshall's Seed Company. Um, this year, they do not have them. They're on, they're on the website, but they're not available. Or at least they weren't when I ordered them. Uh, which leads me into how some of these categories interact. But anyway, these are, I'm going to try these again. These are seeds from Invincible Pumpkins. These are seeds, again, from the internet. There was, um, a couple of years ago, there were Chinese seeds. Um, sorry, not Chinese seeds. They were tomato seeds that were advertised, they still are on the internet, all over all over the internet, as rainbow um, tomatoes. There's a lovely picture of them, all different colours on the vine, quite plainly, I knew before I ordered them, quite plainly a uh, Photoshop scam. But however, on the off chance that it might have worked, I decided to buy some. And I found them for like, I don't know, a pound or something. They duly arrived, I grew them, and they came out as a variety of um, big, like uh, ox heart tomatoes. They were absolutely delicious. Obviously they weren't 
different exotic colours. Didn't seriously expect them to be. But they did come out to be a very, very tasty tomato. So I've saved seeds from them and I'm hoping that they'll come true and we can have some more of those. And there's some other tomato seeds there. These are actually really old. I've, I've lost them and found them and lost them and found them. These are from a really nice cherry tomato that I bought from a supermarket. And I grew again from seed and they're equally delicious. Do not remember the variety. That's probably making a lot of noise on the video, isn't it? Um, do not remember the variety, but they were fantastic. And of course, sunflowers. You can't get enough sunflowers in a garden, as far as I'm concerned. So this is where they overlap. I've got seeds here that I saved, and I have seeds. These are actually left over. These are the original parent ones from a couple of generations ago of these. Um, they're quite nice. They're really nice. Um, they grow really tall, really big. Uh, these are the second, third generation ones. Uh, these ones here in the background. And um, they're just fantastic. So sticking with pumpkins and gourds and loofers and stuff. Um, these are seeds I ordered for loofers, which I grew uh, last year, not last year, the year before, last 2018. They arrived from Belgium, but they're originally from China, strangely enough. They're loofers, they grew, but I planted them far too late in the season, and I'm hoping that they still have enough life in them to try again. Um, there seems to be a date here of uh, May, 19th of May 19, uh, 2014, so if they grow, it'll be a miracle. But I'm hoping they do because I want to get rid of plastic waste and use these eventually as scrubbing brushes, which we'll see. Uh, pumpkins. As I say, the Invincible Pumpkin was unavailable. It's not easy to find. Um, it's a fantastic one. And I thought, well, you know what? Let's try. These are in the ones I'm in the category of ones I'm going to try in the future. So these are new seeds, I'm going to try them in the future. These are pumpkins that are good for Halloween for carving and apparently make really nice um, eating as well. So we shall see how that works. Again, another one in the category of uh, trying for the first time are these peppers. These are apparently some of the biggest peppers, pepper cabanero. Um, some of the, they grow really big apparently uh, and we shall see how they look. I grew peppers last year, a couple of different varieties. Um, they didn't grow particularly fantastically. Well, they did, but they weren't huge. They weren't, they, they were really nice tasting and they cropped quite late in the year in my polytunnel. Um, but there just wasn't, no, just wasn't quite the thickness of the skin, of the, uh, you know, the flesh, everything else. I'm hoping that these will be a little bit better. So we're going to give those a go this time. Now then, Moving on to the category of old favourites, obviously the sunflowers. This variety of cabbage called Duncan, which has become my absolute favourite. You can grow it as a, a over winter as a spring cabbage. Um, I'm trying that at the allotment at the moment. Or you can grow it in spring for a later harvest, and they are absolutely delicious absolutely the most delicious cabbage I've ever eaten. So they are going to be an old uh, long-term favourite, I think. Parsnips. If you watched the video of Christmas dinner being harvested, these Gladiator parsnips, an F1 hybrid, are the ones I was putting out. They do get a little bit of damage um, from root, uh, cabbage root fly, but they grow huge and they're really tasty um, they really are just the most wonderful thing. So they are, again, an old favourite that will be grown year after year. These gherkins, Cornichon de Paris. Uh, this year I bought them from Mr. Fothergills. I'm not sponsored by any of these seed companies. They don't send me anything, well, except for they send to everybody, and they don't send me any, specifically anything free or anything like that. I pay good money. I pay good money for them. 
Um, this variety, Cornichon de Paris, I bought in 2019, I think, in France, in a tobacco in France, and I thought it was a very specific French thing. Um, I've soon realised that they actually are quite widely available, but they're fantastic. These are the best gherkins I've grown. I've grown another variety, which were fine, but these were absolutely fantastic. They you're best picked really small, really small, and pickled. But you can let them grow into a full-size kind of cucumber and eat them as a salad cucumber if you want to. But they are best pickled small, but they pickle beautifully when they're larger, and you can eat them as a, as I say, as a uh, cucumber. They're fantastic. This is by far and away the most outstanding sweet corn I've ever had. Honeydew improved another F1 variety um, from Marshalls again. And this is a new packet. They've I have some left over from last year too. Again, more interaction from uh, seeds in different groups. These grow really well. They're really sweet. Um, I, I follow the Row by Row Garden Show Host Tours recommendation of giving them lots of nitrogen and planting them in rows and then hitting them up. And I've never had them blow over. They've form lovely heads. The squirrels have decided they quite like them as well, so we have to be a bit quick on the harvest. And they freeze beautifully. You just can't beat them. These are the best, by far the best. Honeydew improved F1 sweet corn. The best sweet corn you can grow, in my opinion, in London. Other varieties may do better in other parts of the country, other parts of the world, but these are fantastic. So I've got two packets of those, look. Two and a half packets. We're gonna have lots of that. Beetroot Bolt Hardy. These are the best beetroot again. Another favourite from the favourite group. Grow them year after year. For the last three years I've grown these. Uh, well, two growing seasons, I suppose. Um, into our third year now, tomorrow. Again, reliable, good size, even size, even quality. They don't bolt as the name suggests, they just last forever. Wonderful for pickling. Look at the other video if you've seen how to uh, how to easily pickle beetroot, that's another video I've done. And this was the variety I used. They are fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Can't fault them. And this one, uh, again, this is gonna be a kind of a mixture. I grew this in 2018. They are Dwarf French Beans Maxi variety. I've had to buy them from this seed company who I may be speaking out of turn, I think are just a subsidiary of a larger seed company. Um, I could be wrong, but I believe they might be you know, kind of a marketing thing just to make them look a bit more interesting. Anyway, the long, long story short, these are fantastic. They grow a very small plant, obviously they're a dwarf French bean they uh, present the, all the beans on the very top of the plant, they just hang over the leaves and they're so easy to pick. They taste absolutely delicious. They are fantastic. Now I couldn't find them last year, or I, actually I think what happened was I saved some and I'd lost the seeds. They're probably in the house somewhere. These are um, wonderful. And because I couldn't find them last year, I bought this variety, which sounds similar. It's a, Dwarf French bean. Don't know how to pronounce that. Dedanel? Dedanel? Who knows? Um, they're a totally different looking thing. Uh, Colour. They're, they're kind of this dark purple. Yeah. Mm, you see that these kind of almost black dark purple seeds. It says they're a really heavy cropper, but not in my opinion, they weren't that heavy. And, um, well, you know, I'll grow them again because I've got all these seeds left. Oops. But I'll, I will grow those ones again, but I'm not going to rely on those. These are much tastier, much nicer. Dwarf bean, dwarf French bean maxi. That's the way forward. Uh, bringing us on to... We've done the save seeds, we've done the old trusty reliable seeds. 
green manure. I believe this is a good way forward. Felicia Fanatifi... I can't pronounce that. Tana Setifolia. Facilia Tana Setifolia. There we go. Got there eventually. Uh, these grow really well. I grew these in... I think I threw them in the ground in October at the allotment. We'll go up there when I can leave the house again. And I'll show you how this looks. Um, it's got a borage family. Um, I think it's a borage family. So it looks like the flower looked like that. Uh, like viper's bug loss, something similar like that. They're really soft, fleshy plants, and you can just mow them down before they flower, mow them down and incorporate them into the soil. And they make a really nice green manure. So we'll be using this a lot in the future, I think. It's be a lot cheaper than, uh, I've, got, like I said, I've got a compost heap now, uh, up and running at the allotment. But this will be a lot cheaper than buying supplementary compost and if that big pile of poo at the allotment gets used up that you would have seen in the last video um, this will be a good substitute so I'm going to rely on this more heavily in the future now then going on to seeds that we've got left over and either don't do so well or we'll explain as we go through we've seen these wasn't that impressed they're okay they're not wonderful. Um, forget about those. These came free with a seed order. They are a, a flower, salvia, um, and a coriander. So we'll try those if we can find room. Again, I've got an awful lot of seeds and not a lot of room. So like everybody else, we'll see how we get on. I love kohlrabi. I really like it. But I have such a lot of trouble growing it. I don't know why. I'm just not very good at it. So I tried this one this year. I got little tiny golf ball sized plants. Probably not enough nitrogen. We'll try again. These are seeds from last year. I never got around to planting this purple variety. So we'll try these again this year. I've got some of this green one left. They're really nice, really delicious. I wish I could grow them better. But let's see how we get on. Maybe next year in 2021. We'll do better. The best carrot you can grow, in my opinion. Uh, resist the fly. Got some left, quite a lot of seeds left in here, so I'm not going to buy any more. I'm hoping they'll be fine. They're very, very tolerant of carrot root fly, although I do have a little bit from the late sowing, so maybe they are best sown early and frozen rather than try and squeeze out a late. Um, a late harvest but these again these featured on the harvesting Christmas dinner you saw them they were quite nice a little bit of root fly a very nice variety though very nice very easy recommended highly I had a disaster with all of my alliums so I've got I love spring onions so I bought two varieties of spring onions got absolutely nothing out of them um, they just failed um, well, they didn't fail, they, they grew and then they got eaten by pests, by, I think, slugs mostly. Uh, they may well have been damaged by the, um, what do they call it, the, uh, excuse me, they may, may well have been damaged by the leak, um, So these are spring onions. I've really had not a lot of luck with these spring onions or these leeks. None of my alliums, I'm, I'm just not good at growing onions of any description except for garlic, which seems to grow really well normally. Um, although again, I've had a bit of trouble with that this winter. But in general, I don't seem to have much luck with any of these spring onions or these leeks. They get the um, leek leaf minor moth minor beetle thing in there you, again there's another video where I just gave up with growing leeks and I think the onions went the same way the pigeons the slugs the leek leaf minor bugs things got all of them bit of a disaster I will try again but I don't hold out a lot of hope I've got lots of seeds left I may as well give it another shot see what happens peas 
P. Alderman. These again from last year. I didn't do too well with these. Um, not so much I didn't do too well, but the little mouse that lived in my in one of my plots under the old winter cabbages uh, liked them as much as I did. And she helped herself and took every single one out of the ground. So I'll try again with these, but I'll try them um, growing in the, in a, um, let me see, I'm trying to get my words out. I shall grow them in a gutter and start them off in a gutter and try and plant them out and protect them somehow as they get bigger plants because they're a very nice um, variety, a very old variety from sort of Victorian era apparently I'm told. And they grow, uh, they don't all come at once. So they kind of, you know, they spread out the season a bit for you, I'm told. So we'll try again with these. And then brings me to watermelons, uh, sorry, not watermelons. Um, these are more of a, a honeydew type melon. England is notoriously not really a really good place for growing melons. I bought these seeds but didn't have enough room in the polytunnel last year because of all the peppers I was growing and tomatoes. And I will try them again this year and see if they're any good. You know, in for a penny, in for a pound. I like a, I like a melon. Everyone likes melons, a nice pair of juicy melons. So let's see how we get on with those. Let's see if we can get a couple out and uh, and enjoy those. And these have been left over for years. <laughs> these are echiums, giant echiums from the Canary Islands. They give me um, like a contact dermatitis. They need, they're a biennial, so they need two seasons. And obviously we're a lot colder than the Canary Islands, especially in, in, you know, in London and further north. Down in Cornwall and Devon, they kind of do okay with them. And I think in Australia and places, they're actually a, a, has a you know an invasive pest. But the frost always kills them off in London. In the, where, 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 uh, excuse me, where I live in London. And further north, where it's cooler, they always get killed off. And like I said, they give you this terrible contact dermatitis because of the little uh, hairs on them. So we might try those again, but again, they're just leftover seeds. I probably won't be doing an awful lot with those. So that kind of concludes where we are with seeds. If you've watched this far, thank you very much. Perhaps you could consider subscribing and ringing the bell icon, uh, pressing the bell icon. Then you'll be uh, notified when I put a new video up. So I can grow these seeds, but I can't grow the channel without your help. And if you're an early adopter, you could be amongst the first 100. And if you're amongst the first 1,000, even better. Anyway, as we said, that concludes the video for seeds next year. There are potatoes over in the window there. They'll be getting grown as well. And uh, next year, hopefully, we'll have a good year, a good harvest, and it'll be a much happier new year. So all the best from me to you. Happy New Year. Stay safe. See you soon.